IVF stimulation long protocol from day 21 of the cycle daily injections of GnRH agonists are started scans are done from time to time ideally on alternate days for follicular tracking daily administration of ovarian stimulation drugs are also done till the desired follicular size is reached oocyte pickup is performed in the operating room usually under short general anesthesia oocytes and sperms are joined under certain laboratory condition in order for an embryo to be formed Endometrial thickness is checked on day 2, 3, 5 and 6 after an embryo transfer. What are the benefits of long protocol? It has got higher success rate. Higher number of eggs are retrieved. It can result in better quality eggs. Who decides which protocol should be used? Based on the medical history and overall condition of the patient, the fertility specialist con consultant will establish which protocol will be the most effective for the patient and they will explain why. Here we can see the difference between short and long term IVF stimulation. Short protocol is started from day 2 of the current cycle. Long protocol is started from day 21 of the previous cycle. The long protocol involves an initial down regulation phase which can cause menopausal symptoms in some women on the other hand the short protocol usually has lesser horm hormonal impacts now something about ivf it is a complex series of procedures used to help with the fertility or prevent genetic problem and assist with the conception of a child ovarian stimulation is the first step in this process the control ovarian stimulation is done by long and short protocols the type, dosage and frequency of medication is tailored specifically to the patient for optimal result. Next step is follicular tracking. So we monitor ovarian stimulation by transvaginal ultrasound scan. Monitoring of the eggs may occur daily or every few days during this time to determine when they get mature. A final trigger shot is given exactly 36 hours before the schedule at retrieval to finalize the maturation process. So after ovarian stimulation, the next step is oocyte retrieval and that is done once the eggs are matured. During egg retrieval, a suction device connected to a long thin needle is inserted through the patient's vagina. This punctures the ovarian follicle and pulls the mature eggs out. The removed eggs are placed in petri dish containing a special solution and then placed in an incubator for a short period of time. Incubation is done under controlled environment in the laboratory. Since this procedure is mildly invasive, medications and sedations are used for the patient's comfort. Fertilization of the eggs take place within a day. Now comes the growing and waiting. The fertilized eggs are monitored and left to develop over next several days with the cells actively dividing. About half of the fertilized embryos will progress to the blastocyst stage when they are suitable for transfer into uterus. Embryos that are suitable for transfer can be either used straight away or frozen for future transfer. Embryo transfer is done within a week after fertilization. This short procedure takes about 10 minutes and feels very similar to pelvic examination like in case of the pap smear taking. In this procedure, a speculum is placed within vagina and a thin catheter is inserted through the cervix into the uterus. The embryos are then injected through the catheter into the uterus. After an embryo transfer, a patient may experience symptoms such as mild bloating and cramping, breast tenderness from high estrogen level along with other symptoms such as spotting and the constipation. Within 14 days after embryo transfer, a blood test will be done to determine if the patient is pregnant or not. If the patient is found to be pregnant, she begins the journey of the prenatal care. Pregnancy success rate per embryo transfer vary depending upon the age of the woman and the time of the egg retrieval. If the pregnancy test is negative, patient can carry, uh, patient can try another embryo transfer if she has additional embryo frozen from the first IVF cycle. If the patient doesn't have remaining embryos, she can try IVF again. It's very important to note that IVF has been used successfully for more than four decades all over the world.
So thank you so much. That was all about the long protocol of IVF stimulation and something about the steps of IVF. Subscribe on Obsendgaini. Allah Hafiz.